Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. What have you been up to lately? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing Beetlejuice once again because NASA has just recently released a somewhat unusual report indicating that Beetlejuice is at it again and we have no idea why. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. And let's start right here around a hypothetical terrestrial planet orbiting the beautiful Betelgeuse. We don't really know if there are any planets here, but if there are any planets, they're probably extremely young. Anyway, so Betelgeuse has been kind of acting up lately. But the thing is, there is a very important reason why you haven't heard about Betelgeuse in the last few months. If we were to try to find Betelgeuse in the night skies, it would be somewhere right there, the so-called shoulder of Orion. Now, if we wait long enough, in between, I guess, May to roughly around August, it's almost impossible to see Betelgeuse because, as you can see, it's pretty much covered by our sun. And because of this, observations of Betelgeuse have kind of stopped from Earth, and we couldn't really see what's happening to it for the past few months. And interestingly here, you'll also see the beautiful comet Neowise approaching the sun as well. I myself have not really had a chance to see it, unfortunately, but uh, some people send me really beautiful pictures, and we'll probably talk more about this in some of the future videos. So anyway, Sun was covering Betelgeuse, which as you can see from this light plot, happens pretty much every single year, where we kind of miss a lot of the observations. And here's, by the way, what all of this would look like if you were to plot 10 years of observations with the very, very unexpected dip right here, and that's what we were talking about a few months ago. But then there was a very unusual recent announcement coming from astronomers using another telescope. And this is actually something really, really cool. So first of all, here we can choose the name of the star, we can also choose the dates. I'm only going to do one year, starting from today. And I'm also going to select the bands, I'm only interested in visual band here, because that's the most populated one. And then we're just going to see what it's going to produce for us. And you'll notice right here at the end, once again, it started dimming. And this is really peculiar because we know that Betelgeuse normally only dims every 420 days. And so between this dim and the next dim, there should be at least a year and a half. But it already started dimming yet again. But it was also really important for some scientists to see what happened right here when the Betelgeuse was kind of hidden by the sun. Because these recent observations might just be an error or we might be seeing something that's very temporary. And so some scientists decided to use these telescopes that we often use to look at our sun. Right here there's actually two telescopes, one called Stereo Behind and one called Stereo Ahead that are orbiting in the same orbit as planet Earth in the so-called Lagrange points. And by constantly being in these two points, these two telescopes can actually be in a permanent, very stable orbit. Normally we use these two telescopes to look at various types of uh, emissions from the sun and they're actually very sensitive at that. But this time, some of the scientists decided to point these telescopes at Betelgeuse. And they had to slightly modify some of the observational parameters of the telescopes in order to see the visual observations from Betelgeuse. And well, essentially this is what they saw. They saw a dip starting yet again. During that time when we were not really looking at Betelgeuse, during the time it was hidden by the sun. This means that the dip might actually occur much sooner than we originally anticipated, but most importantly, it really raises a lot of questions about what's kind of happening on Betelgeuse. Now, in the last video I made, we've talked about the dimming being caused by possible extremely, extremely large sunspots, or technically star spots. These Betelgeuse spots would be so gigantic that they would basically make it dim by roughly around two and a half times. But because these spots are almost impossible to see from this distance, and also because they would be very difficult for us to analyze in any way, we don't really know if this is the best explanation right now. Now, the stereo telescopes might be able to give us a little bit more accurate data about the visual perspective and about the visual observations of the star, but we're not going to be able to see anything that can definitively show us what's happening with this unusual star and if it's actually going to go supernova or not. Now, interestingly, the device used for looking at Betelgeuse in these stereo telescopes is usually used to detect the coronal mass ejections coming from the sun, and this is really the primary mission for these two telescopes, trying to see if any of the dangerous emissions are coming toward our planet. But because these devices are so extremely sensitive, the scientists actually had to recalibrate the device to be a lot less sensitive because Betelgeuse is actually a really, really bright star. 
So for about five days uh, during this period, the scientists, instead of looking at our sun, were looking at Betelgeuse with a slight modification to the actual uh, telescope. You can learn more about the team investigating this and also the um, actual announcement in this link in the description below. But overall, this obviously raises a lot more questions again because this kind of makes no sense right now. The star is behaving in a very hectic, very unpredictable way. And although it was slightly brighter than usual back in May, it was already much dimmer a few weeks ago. But one of the major questions everyone usually asks when there is a video about Betelgeuse is what would happen if it did go supernova? Hypothetically, if this is actually the sign of Betelgeuse about to explode, do we have to worry about it? Well, the short answer here is no, not really. Based on everything we know from the 1987 supernova, we kind of know today that, uh, well, the dangerous part is going to be only if the supernova is only within about 50 light years away from us. Betelgeuse is at least 10 times farther away. And so if it does go supernova, it's obviously going to create a very, very bright flash for roughly around two or maybe three months. And after this, it's slowly going to dim to the point where we're not really going to be able to see it very easily. But most importantly, before the supernova itself, there's going to be a huge influx of various neutrinos and potentially gravitational waves coming from this area at least a couple of days in advance. And this will definitely tell scientists that something weird is going on or is about to happen. In terms of the total brightness, this should be equivalent to, well, not really a full moon, but possibly something like a half moon. So it's going to be bright enough to actually see in the night skies. It's also going to be bright enough to cast shadows in the middle of the night. And we might even be able to see it um, in the middle of the day as a tiny, tiny star, very bright star, somewhat similar to how sometimes you can see Venus in the night skies as well. But because it's going to be brighter than Venus and almost as bright as the moon itself, certain animals, specifically the ones that rely on the moon and moonlight for either a reproduction or for, for some other reasons, such as, for example, corals and coral reefs that rely on the moonlight for their reproduction cycle, might be the ones affected by this the most. But in terms of the actual radiation or anything else dangerous coming from the supernova, we're not really going to experience any of this because of the distances involved. So in that sense, it's definitely interesting from a scientific perspective, and of course from the perspective of learning more about supernova, especially very close to us, but it's not really dangerous and there's really nothing to worry about. However, just like I mentioned in some of the previous videos, it is very, very unlikely right now that it's going to go supernova, especially because some of the previous studies also suggested that this is actually a star that is a result of a collision between two different stars. And because of this, it has quite a lot of fuel still to go on for millions of years. So don't really hold your breath expecting a supernova. The unusual dark spots or star spots on top of the Betelgeuse is still really the best explanation to what we observed in the last few months and what we're once again observing now. At the same time, pretty much a few days after I finished making this video, another study recently announced that the observations from the Hubble telescope using ultraviolet light that probed the star's outer atmosphere back in 2019 and also more recently in 2020 was able to observe earlier last year really large amounts of material moving at around 200,000 miles per hour, moving away from the outer atmosphere of the star. So this new study also suggests that maybe it was some sort of a dust that was released from the star that caused the dimming that we observed very recently. Interestingly, this also suggests that approximately twice the normal amount of material was released from Betelgeuse over a period of only a few months. So this was a much larger eruption than we usually observe from the star. But in the next few months, we'll definitely get a lot more accurate observations because once again, this seems to be the star everyone is going to be talking about. Most importantly, it might actually lead us to construction and possibly development of some other better, bigger telescopes in the future, just so we can take a look at the star in a little bit more detail and find out what's happening with it and possibly answer the question of dimming once and for all. And if you'd like to check out those graphs I showed you earlier by yourself and find out what Betelgeuse is up to right now, you can find the links for this in the description below. Let's finish this video on this beautiful comparison picture between Betelgeuse of 2019 and Betelgeuse of, I think this is May of 2020, where the daemon is extremely apparent 
And well, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't shared this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt I'm wearing right now as well. And see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.